In this video, we are going to work on challenge activity 3.4.1, which deals with relational and equality operators. Before we immediately jump into the question, let's discuss what these two operators are. Inequality operator. What is it? It's an operator that checks whether two operands values are the same or are different. In other words, it's basically asking the same thing as whether the value on the left hand is equal to the value on the right hand or whether the variable on the left holds the same value as the variable on the right. So for, exa for example, we have two variables A and B and we are making a claim where we are say that the value stored in variable A is the same as the value stored in variable B. So a double equals to operator is used to check or is basically used to make the claim that the value stored in the two variables is the same. If it is, then the boolean true is going to be returned to us. True is indicative of the result that the values are the same in both of the variables. If they aren't, then the boolean value false is going to be returned to us and false as obvious would be indicative of the result that the values differ. Uh, the values stored in both of the variables differ from each other, right? In the second, in this second case, we are say that we say that b is double equals to a, which is basically making the claim that the value stored in variable b is the same as the value stored in variable a. If the values one second do match, the boolean value true is going to be returned. Otherwise, the value boolean value false is going to be returned to us. The third case is a bit different. In the third case, we don't use the double equals to operator, which is used to check whether va the values in the on the left hand side and the right hand side are the same. And instead, we use the not equals to operator. So the not equals to operator is used to make the claim that the value on the left hand side differs from very much from the value on the right hand side. In our case, we are basically saying that the value stored in variable A very much differs from the value stored in variable b right if the values do differ so we have a typo here if the values do differ then the boolean value true is going to be returned to us because they match our claim otherwise the boolean value false is going to be returned to us in this last case we are making the claim that the value stored in variable b once again differs from the value stored in variable a we have a small typo here so if the values do differ then the boolean value false is going to be returned to us accordingly if they don't which means that the values are the same or match then the boolean value true is going to be returned to us i hope that was clear so we have a small example right here in this table that you see so this table was picked from the Xilabs from your activity book. So we have the double equals to operator, which is essentially used to once again being repetitive, but make the claim that A is equals to B. And so we have two examples right here. We have a variable as X that is stores the value three. In the first example, we make the claim that X is double equals to three, which is true because X is stores the value three Hence, on the left hand side, we have the value 3 and we have the value 3 on the right hand side as well, right? So basically, the left hand side equals the right hand side. In the second example, we say that x is double equals to 4. Now, x is 3 and 3 is not the same as 4. 3 is not 4. So the Boolean value false is returned to us accordingly. The second equality operator that we have is the not equal not equals to operator which is used to make the claim that a is not equals to b so x is not equals to 3 this is false because x stores the value 3 and hence 3 is equals to 3 right so false x is not equals to 4 this is true because x holds the value 3 and so x and 4 do not match they very much differ so this was the equality operator. Now we'll move on to the relational operators. So a relational operator checks how one operand's value relates to another, like being greater than, greater than equals to, lesser than, or lesser than equals to. So we have four different kind of relational operators. We have the lesser than operator, right? So 
A lesser than operator is basically used to make the claim that the value on the left hand or the value stored in the variable on the left hand is smaller than the value stored in the variable on the right hand. So for example, we have two variables a and b and we are making the claim that the value stored in variable a is lesser than the value stored in variable b. If this is true, then the boolean value true will be returned to us accordingly. If it's false, then, which means that the value stored in A is not lesser than the value stored in B, same thing as saying as A is greater than B, then the boolean value false is going to be written to us. The second operator that we have in relational operators is the lesser than equals to operator. This operator used to make the claim that the value on the left hand side is either the same or is smaller than the value on the right, right hand side, right? Then the third operator that we have is the greater than operator, which is just the opposite of the lesser than operator. So we use the greater than operator to make the claim that the value on the left hand is greater than the value on the right hand. Make sense? Last but not the least, we have the greater than equals to operator. So we use this operator to make the claim that the value on the left hand is equal to, right, is either the same or greater than the value on the right hand. So for this, we'll discuss a case study. We have two variables, A and B, right? And we are making the claim that A is greater than equals to B. If we translate this into words, we are seeing that the value stored in value variable A is either the same or is greater than the value stored in variable B. So challenge activity 3.4.1. We are required to type the program's output. So we have the code that's been given to us. We need to dry run this code and accordingly print the program's output, right? So after we dry run this code, we are going to have an output um, that we obtain based on how our program works. So first we have this variable called numx. It is numx, sorry about that. Numx stores integers. Right now, the variable numx stores the value five. And then we have this condition, right? Now, if you remember, we have a block of code within the if block and the else block respectively, right? And how this condition evaluates, so we have a claim that we are making, we have a condition that we have set. If this condition evaluates to true, then the block of code within the if block is going to be executed. If the condition evaluates to false, then the block of code within the else block is going to be executed, right? So only one of the blocks of code is going to be executed depending on how the condition evaluates. Finally, we have this last line of code. This is outside of our if else, right? This falls outside the scope of our if else. It doesn't matter how our condition evaluates because these are two separate things. And this line of code, this last line of code is going to be executed irrespective of what we have, right? So we have numx, so the value 5 is in numx. Is numx less than or equals to 4? We know that 5 is not less than or equals to 4. 5 is in fact greater than or equals to 4. This means that the, we made a claim that numx is less than or equals to 4 and the claim did not hold true, right? Because 5 is greater than 4, hence we came into the else block and now the code within the else block is going to be executed. Accordingly, we have D as one of our outputs. And then if you remember, I said that the last line of code that we see does not fall within the if else block, right? So it does not fall within the scope of the if else block and it's, and it's part of the main program that is that will be executed. So this line of the code will be executed and hence we have will have g in the output let's check whether we did correctly and yes we passed the test case moving on to the next part of this question so in the next part of this question we have this variable num bikes num bikes hold the value 5 we set the condition that num bikes must be greater than or equals to 4 for this block of code to execute 
So is numbers is numbers greater than equals to four? Yes, it is because numbers hold the value five, and five is in fact greater than four. Hence, the block of code within the if block is going to be executed. Therefore, we will have a as one of the outputs. Next, we will skip over the else block because the condition came out to be true, right? And when the condition comes out to be true, then the block of code within the if block is executed, and we don't go into the else block. Finally, we have this last line of code that is out of the if else block, and then that's also going to be executed accordingly. Great, we obtained the correct output. Moving on to the third part, we have this variable called num puppies. Num puppies hold the holds the value six. We make the claim that the value stored in num puppies is the same as the value four, which we know is not true because six is not equals to four. Six is not the same as four, right? So the value six and the value four are very different. Hence, this condition, this condition of ours evaluates to false, which means that the block work of code within the if block will not be executed. Instead, we'll go into the else part, right? And in the else part, in the else block, this line of code will be executed respectively, right? So we'll have e as part of our output, and then we'll have once again the last line of code, which is not part of the if else block, and will be executed, you know, as part of the main program that's running. And therefore, we'll have g as well. Let's check this. We obtained the correct output, right? Finally, moving on to the last part of this, we have the variables num apples. Num apples stores the value six. We make the condition that for this block of code to run, num apples must not be equals to four, and six is not equals to four. This condition evaluates to true. Hence, this line of code will definitely run. We'll have a as one of the outputs. We won't go to the else block because the condition evaluated to true. Right, so we'll skip over the else block. Finally, coming on to the last line, which is the last line of block, which asks us to print h to the console, and we'll do so accordingly. Let's check this. Great, we managed to accomplish um, all four parts of the question. We got the correct outputs for that. If you have any questions or any feedback that you would like to give, you are more than welcome to reach out.